Hey, I'm Nick Avalon Gamer, and welcome to a Pro Cycling Manager 2021 tutorial on sprints. Now, there's a lot of things to consider as you prepare for a sprint, but as you can see from the profile of this race, it's totally flat, and we're now about 20 kilometers from the finish line. A few of the things that you can consider but don't necessarily have to consider stage by stage, but they make subtle, small differences and as you're trying to get better, you might be looking for every little piece, every little advantage that you can gain. Well, here's some ways to look for some advantages. One, pay attention to the width of the road. The width of the road absolutely matters. If you have a tight, compact road that only has width for three, four, five riders, fewer riders are going to fit in the space. Position's going to matter a lot more within the peloton, meaning you're going to want to be out front and then just try to hold other riders off. Also, consider your own sprinters. What is their strength? What are they capable of? Are you going to dominate naturally and just need to be near the front at the right time? Or are you going to be more like myself who always plays with some sort of disadvantage and your sprinters are never as good as the others, but you'd still like to compete and therefore you go for it and you need every little advantage you can get. Well, we're going to go for that maximum advantage type sprint because if you have Caleb Ewan or Sam Bennett on your team, as in you have world-class sprinters and you're up against weaker competition and you're still not winning, well, something's not right. Uh, and, and it's certainly possible. And maybe we can fix that here. It's a much tougher challenge to take on a weak sprinter and find a way to get them to win. That's the kind of tools I want to give you within this tutorial. In the setup, another thing to look out for is what's What's the terrain, right? In this case, it's going to be totally flat, though you can see from the profile that it is actually slightly uphill at the finish line. That is a factor. That could rule out, say, 100 meters of our sprint, meaning we're going to have to start our sprint ever so slightly later to make sure we have enough energy to get to the end. Next thing is wind. Wind is absolutely a factor. Now, right now, the wind is going left to right. Uh, o on the keyboard is a quick way to bring up the uh, wind sock, by the way. But you can see just ahead of us the breakaway group that we have nearly reeled in that we need to push really hard to make sure we do because it's still a minute with only 20k to go and quite a few riders up there. Uh, plus a few that have been attacking off of the front. So they've been joined by a few riders from the peloton and that gives them a little more strength. But anyway... Uh, they are about to turn into a right-to-left manner. Now, it's the finish line that matters, not necessarily the lead-up to that. And to check that, you go into map, and for one thing, there's your wind sock showing that it's 28 kilometers per hour, which is hefty winds that will impact things, and they're going down here. Now, you can see that the breakaway is right here, and they're actually going to be turning back the other way, so opposite of the direction of where we are going right now. So it's actually going to be a tailwind as you go in towards the finish, but then just at that last little bit, that little uphill, I'm, I would bet you that it's right here is that little uphill inside that final kilometer, and that is a crosswind but slight tailwind as you head in towards that finish. Now, is the finish? It's right there. It's on the way up that little hill. Slight hill, slight tailwind, but bit of a crosswind, but only right at the finish and the run up in the kilometers to it is definitely a tailwind. Those are the kind of key factors you want to look out for there. After that, it's what do you have in terms of your sprint team. The scenario for this race is we are the favorites. Therefore, we must control the peloton, and we've been controlling. Centron and Aruti, LaRue have all been used to try to bring back this large breakaway, and all these other teams are trying to attack, knowing that they're probably not going to win via sprint. I'm actually down to just four riders at the moment, and we need to start bringing these guys back soon. Now, our favorite is Vermeulen. And Vermeulen is a 72-72, which is just okay. It's continental level race that we're doing here. But he's also a little tired. Levesier is a 72-72 and has better sprint, but you can see he's actually pretty tired too. Laveau's a 72-72 with similar, and he is going bringing water back to the rest of the team. And the Marche is the one, I think, who is best suited at the moment of the four remaining 
to do some dirty work. So let's go ahead and put him on relay for the moment. He's going to have to relay pretty hard because his teammates ahead of him are quite tired. And at least there's one other. No, he's trying to attack, actually. And we need to try to bring these guys back. Now we've rounded that corner. So now that wind should be yeah, tailwind for the most part as we head in towards the finish. The water task is done. Let me go ahead and start setting you know what it's 17k let's not set things up just yet now most races especially when you're not the favorite not having to control the peloton you're going to want to be in a scenario where your sprinter is fresh and protected and we're not able to do that right now because we need these guys going forward 14k uh, the gap is coming down and Tabarshi is lowering that gap slightly, so he is bringing these guys back as we continue and do another lap. Okay. Now, when you are that desperate team, the team that is not as good, and you really need every advantage, best thing is position, and then just trying to stay ahead. If you're coming from behind, you have to out-sprint. If you start five bike lengths behind another sprinter with your sprinter and your sprinter is lower rated and they start their sprint at the same time who do you think is going to win a hundred percent of the time it's going to be the other guy it's not going to be your guy you need every advantage you can get but if you're five bike lengths ahead of another sprinter when both of you start your sprint at the same time they're faster. They still have a good chance of beating you, but it's not guaranteed. It's not going to be 100% of the time. If you are in the advantageous position, then your odds improve significantly. And that is my play style to a T. And that is my biggest recommendation. Normally, if I have a full team at my disposal, I'm setting up a sprint train with all or most of my team anywhere from 14 to about 17 kilometers out. And then controlling the peloton controlling the tempo and staying out front going fast enough to stay out front but not completely wear out my my sprinter themselves until i get down to those last few guys but we're already in that front position and not having to catch up against another team who might be doing the same sort of thing i want to be out front and i want to stay out front and that's that's my big message to you but let's go ahead and now with 10 kilometers to go and just four riders to make this happen see what we could do about a sprint train we've nearly brought these guys back it's only 47 seconds now and the back end of the group is just there beyond that motorcycle not far away for Mulen is the sprinter let's go ahead and go with him uh, Laveau looking a little bit better than Levasseur and then at the Marche that's that's four riders Let's give these guys a second. They're all right here. Get in order. Perfect. Okay, four guys in order. You could just click a drag, by the way, if you're not familiar with this, to get somebody in line. If you take Vermeulen and click and drag on Laveau, that's going to line him up behind Laveau. And you do that in one big order, and now we have one big train. Now, we don't need to go relay anymore. Uh, we're going to go gel for Antomarché. If you've saved your gels for the end of the race, it's very handy. It lets their stamina last a little bit longer. You can see we're just about ready to reel these guys in. So we have successfully done that. And if we take a moment, you can now see we have eight kilometers left. We have to be super careful on this occasion. Normally, I would push a lot harder than this. But one, there's still a single rider to... Uh, to bring back so we got to be careful about that but we also have a lot of fatigue in the legs of these four riders so normally i'd be pushing mid 90s right now but uh, based on how tired they are i need to make sure that we can make it the distance so we're going to sit up ever so slightly now a normal sprint train what you want to do is you want to have your quickest overall sprint speed guy at the back you're going to want somebody with a bit of balance here a little acceleration would be good here from this wheel forward and possibly from this wheel if you only have two sprinters you're looking for highest flat rating if you are not sprinting if you are just actively riding the way that we are right now with Antomarché with his 87 effort 
an effort cursor up, he is just writing at 87% of his maximum capacity. What that is using is his stamina resistance, but mostly it's using his flat rating. That's how fast you go on the flat under normal circumstances. This would be normal circumstances until we begin the sprint. But with 7k to go Levesier, he's not going to make it all the way to the end. And a typical sprint, 6 kilometers out, is where you want to use energy gels to prepare for the final run-in. So you can see we're still getting these attempted attacks. We're still getting these little accelerations. And this is what we're trying to guard against. Now if you look right now, Antomarche is just about out of energy, but not quite. We want to make sure that just before, or just as he's about to run totally out of energy, pause the way I just did, and we're going to switch things up. So let's go ahead and do that here in just a moment. There you go. You see he has got 1% red bar left. He is about to fade very quick. He's going to lose a lot of speed. Right now he's going 51 kilometers an hour. It's going to get significantly lower. Also, we're down to 4 kilometers now for these last three riders. And the Marche brought us, well, from a ways back, but specifically from that eight kilometer mark where we started our sprint train down to four K. So we just rode four Ks for us. And now we only have four Ks left to go for our sprinters. But again, pretty tired. We still can't push too hard for these guys. 70 is not going to do it. I think at 88, maybe we could pull an 88 from here. This is getting awfully tight in terms of how much energy these guys have left to finish the job. But you see that guy next to us here. He's pushing with all he's got. He's trying to attack, but he's not able to get off the front. So we're negating these attacks and we're keeping everybody behind. You can see, yes, we are being followed by sprinters. There are sprinters out here that are ready to pounce. They're trying to ride our wheel, but look how far back a lot of these guys are. They are well too far behind. I mean, like Grolier, not much of a sprinter. There you go. Delay sitting way back here. This is six seven bike lengths behind us somehow or another if he's going to win he's going to have to make up that ground and then beat us in a sprint and this is why this is such an effective tactic now inside three kilometers your sprinter themselves can go anywhere from about 800 meters out so 0.8 to about 1.4 but all of that is circumstantial all of that depends on a number of factors. And let's talk about those very briefly before we get into that final sprint. If it's downhill, even slightly, they're going to be able to go from further out. Wind at your back, they're going to be able to go a little bit further out, 50, 100 meters further out, maybe 150 meters further out. If it's uphill, you definitely need to go a shorter distance on your sprint. If they're very tired, they're going to run out of energy faster, so you need to go later. This is very tired, so we're going to need to go later. It's slightly uphill. We're going to need to go later. I'm going to have to get him down, I'd say, maximum from 1K out. I'd like to see it get down to about 850 meters because slightly uphill and tired. And then it's going to be the crosswind right at the end. I'd like to save him for the last little bit. Laveau might be able to go from roughly 2 kilometers out with his sprint if he is this strong. Right now, we still have 3.1 in Lavasia. I don't know if he's going to make it 1.1. And we still need to catch one last rider, so we really can't afford to wait too long. Otherwise, he's going to claim victory. I'd like to be pushing like 98, 99 with this guy, but we really can't. However, two kilometers out, this was the mark where I said maybe I can sprint with him. What I'm going to do is I'm going to begin the acceleration phase, even though he's almost out of energy. I'm going to begin the acceleration with him. He's going to pedal hard and add a, a few kilometers per hour. Laveau is going to be in his wheel still, going to accelerate, meaning it's not going to take as much energy for Laveau to do that. But it's only going to last for a very, very short period of time, 50 to 100 meters, because Lavoisier is very, very close to out of energy. And there you go. There you can see he did pick up, I think it was 5 kilometers per hour, right? Was he going 51 or was it 52? Either way, uh, very close. Also, we're at 1.7, making it very possible that we are going to finish this sprint the way we need to. Laveau, look, didn't even hurt him. He's at 55. 
He's already got that acceleration happening, and now he just needs to sprint a little bit more. You can see one rider is trying to overtake us, Devane, but he is doing so on his own. He has no team support, so he's already pushing, meaning guaranteed he is not at full red bar right now. For Mullen, is. So we are still the favorite if we can catch this last breakaway rider. We'll see. Laveau onto his sprint to lead this thing out. Okay, last thing you want to consider on these sprints is now new for PCM 21, positioning matters on corners. In the past, the way the game worked was you can think of a board game. The way a board game turns corners. One slot is one slot and you just move forward one slot even though it turns corners. The old model for PCM all the way up through 2020, corners were treated like blocks. And if you were on the inside of that corner, even though visibly you can see just a few meters to round the corner and outside you can see a much larger uh, or much longer path to cover they would actually physically cover the same distance in the game mechanics and do so at the same speed and there was never alterations if you were inside outside everybody would enter at the same point and exit at the same point with no change so corners they they tried to avoid having corners just before a finish because the mechanic was less than stellar they have a more realistic system as of pcm 21 and now there is an advantage to taking the inside of the corner it's a shorter distance outside is a longer distance so taking the inside does matter Laveau looks like he's actually headed for the outside right now as we have 1.1 K to go it looks like the uphill is as you kind of round this corner right here too it starts to go up but only slightly I think we could uh, set for Mullen free here in just a moment I think we can go at about 900 meters with him uh, also we are on the verge of catching that breakaway rider and look at the gap we are already starting to open up on these guys that are chasing that's it there's not much left to contend with us right now you have three riders that are anywhere near us plus one in front of us four guys to contend and then i've got three up there we're looking pretty dang good at this point so Laveau, we want Laveau to take the inside but he's gonna go through the middle there okay here's what i was talking about though with 800 meters to go now for mulet Laveau's speed is hurting him he is not at full strength we are slightly uphill he's gonna run out of energy fairly quickly I'm actually gonna go ahead and keep him in the wheel of Laveau a little bit longer and we'll now check in again back here and see just how big those gaps are going this guy totally out of reach now the main trying but remember he tried to pass us and see how f far back he is now this guy is keeping up just about and then we've nearly caught this breakaway rider who desperately hanging on and he's going to get just swallowed. <laughs> he is going to get swallowed whole as we approach the finish line here. Laveau still has a little energy for Mullen. Like I said, yeah, he's kind of running low. So I'm going to go ahead and keep him in the wheel of Laveau just a, a, a little bit longer knowing how tired he is. But as we push to the front push for the line 400 meters let's go ahead and get him all off the wheel Laveau could hang on to win this but you can see just how close to being totally out of energy that he is I have a feeling he's gonna fade and Vermeulen should be on his way towards victory oh he takes the outside but he does as expected take the win and Laveau with the lead out grabs the win oh grabs second that is but look how far ahead they end up of everybody else positioning made a huge difference on this you saw one guy who really tried to make a move but he was coming from too far back you saw everybody else lose contact the moment we went hardcore and really pushed for that one and that's the basics of how to get through a sprint check your energy energy is super important go at the right time follow your guys through and get a good strong front position and you're gonna win a lot of sprints a 72 72 sprinter is not that fast yet we comfortably not only won this but claimed a 1-2 victory even though they were all quite tired and it was our team that we buried half of that team just to bring back the breakaway group granted the rest of the field 
they didn't have great sprinters either but that is that is the how-to that's how you're going to do it if you have questions let me know in the comments below because there are so many different scenarios so many different factors things to think about and i i could have missed something i'm sure i did that's going to do it for this one, though. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you next time. Next up is a mountain tutorial. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.